Thank you, Lifen, for sponsoring today's video. This here's my base model Mac Mini. I've had it since it practically came out. I mainly bought it to keep up with my iOS development progress as my main desktop to work from home and as our local computer in the condo. Honestly, for the past year and a half, it's been able to save my butt quite a few times and it's delivered a very reliable user experience that I wasn't quite expecting from a base model machine. So yeah, I think my purchase was very much worth it, but I always knew that eventually it was going to need an upgrade. I don't consider myself as a casual user, nor someone that relatively uses its computers for only light tasks. So after putting this thing through the ringer, I think it really allows me to explain to you what owning a Mac mini base model means in 2024. Look, for a lot of people, a base model will be more than enough. I paid 799 Canadian dollars back in January 2023 for a machine that has 8GB of unified memory and 256GB in SSD storage. And even for me at the time, I told myself, bah, for me it's enough. I do plan on eventually getting a Mac Studio as my work evolves here, but for now I think it'll do the job, and it did, until I ran into a few hiccups throughout last year. Now, it's actually been hiccup after hiccup after hiccup, but you guys have to understand that this is my primary machine for iOS development. Learning and trying out new programming projects, I learned to slightly implement our new color grade for our videos on this, I edit pictures on Lightroom here when I'm on a pinch, like I've used and abused it, and I've pushed this past its threshold. The base model Mac Mini isn't exactly... Uh, a machine for me. However, it is a great solution for a lot of people. I was reading a lot of threads online the other day and I kept seeing the same questions pop up. Hey, I'm a student or hey, we're a family that would like the computer for us and the kids. We would like to use Spotify, stream content, have a bunch of Safari tabs open. And the same thing goes with a lot of students. A lot of students practically aimed at either using Discord, Notion, Office 365 apps, more than 20 Chrome tabs with Spotify open, for the average consumer that will not go past those needs. The base model is so much more than enough, like things will run very, very smoothly. And it really does guys, like I can be in Excel and like filter out things, things filter pretty freaking fast. I can clear those filters, I can go on Discord, I can take a look at my chats, you know, I can type things if I wanna type things. I can go on Notion, check out Notion, load other tabs in Notion, it works fine. Go on other Excel sheets, you know, things work pretty freaking well. I can zoom in, I can go back on Spotify, I can do all sorts of things, go back to Chrome, check out my tabs very, very fast. And I get it, what about future proofing? Look, honestly, some people really don't go past those needs, and I get it, with time and new software, 8GB might start to crawl on new software, but by the time the average consumer hits that point, they'll have a good return on investment and even more. This is just my opinion from the limitations this machine has given us this past year and a half. Do I think it's starting to get a bit ridiculous to offer 8GB for a base model in 2024? Yes. Yes, kinda, but if that means it cuts prices by a lot for the average consumer to scoop one, I think it does make sense. And I love Apple, but charging four to five times for storage and memory upgrades compared to other similar options on custom PCs, it's kind of wild and I wish they would tame that down, although there are ways to stay away from upgrading. If most of your issues come from memory pressure and storage, you can get away with it by not upgrading. The best thing to do is to use a storage solution for holding projects. I'm not doing it because that's not my only issue and besides, my point here was to simply test this as a standalone unit and actually run projects off its SSD to test performance. But the cheapest way for you to get fast storage would be to buy something like a portable SSD at one terabyte and connected to the Mac mini. It's not the cleanest solution, I know. You will have to deal with this being attached like a dongle without a dock and potentially wasting a Thunderbolt port depending on your setup. However, it works really well. Just don't expect the same write and read speeds, but again, honestly, even for compiling and running code, you'll 
barely barely notice it now i do see a lot of people going for the 16512 config and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that like if you know your workflow will eventually evolve i think that's a great way of future proofing yourself if running things on the onboard memory or the integrated ssd to take advantage of what m2 has to offer is what you need then it's a great solution but just know that the more you try to use heavy software the less your issues will be ram and storage related like don't expect m2 to fully run s-log footage on massive timelines you need to color grade and add music sound effects sound design play with graphics or have an insane amount of mobile front end and back end code open at all times running projects and trying to run, I don't know, ML models off of it. Really, I'm not trying to be a party pooper, but at some point guys, especially the developers, you guys start off very nicely, very soft, front end, back end, but as you evolve, as your like workflow evolves, you're gonna start running into some hiccups, you know? Like it's not gonna be able to keep up as much as it used to because your projects are much larger you're building back-end stuff you're maybe using postman to hit apis docker as well like things will start to sort of freeze a tiny bit on you and we'll start to needing more resources honestly though if you are in this situation i know chances are this isn't the computer you are looking to buy i just thought it was worth mentioning although basic timelines on software like davinci will do you wonders with this config especially if you're not using log footage editing on lightroom using some photoshop maybe not premiere pro so much will be great you can get away with a lot and the same thing goes with programming until a certain point like i said i just think the 16 512 gigabyte solution is a very elegant way of getting a lot more programming projects done as for the size, Mac Mini is honestly unbeatable. There's no other computer out there that is this reliable, consumer grade and packs so much power in this form factor. This is like the type of machine you can literally set up anywhere. You can hide it if you need to, blend it in like I did on top of my speakers or simply make it part of your setup. Like I actually saw a mount on Amazon that allows you to attach it underneath the tabletop. I think that could be a really good way of storing it. Regardless of what you end up doing, just know that this really acts like a fanless machine in the way that its fans run very, very silently. Like even when I have a heavy workload running, I've never once heard the fans kick in or the computer struggling. For its size, it's just really damn impressive and even though the Mac Mini isn't a proper portable machine like the MacBook, it sure makes it easier to transport if ever you need to. And the same thing goes with the Apple of toothbrushes. You see, as I'm editing this video, I just came back from Taiwan and I brought my life in toothbrush with me. Just like the Mac Mini, this electric toothbrush has an unboxing experience very identical to this. From the packaging itself to the green tabs, the way it opens as it reveals the product, the whole branding just really delivers that same uniqueness that Apple offers to their consumers. And that includes their ability to build an all milled out body of a single piece of aluminum or stainless steel casing. There are no physical buttons or gaps where water could get into. It feels firm and nice to hold while brushing your teeth and the battery life is solid which charges with a braided MagSafe like charging cable. The really cool part is that this is a toothbrush that delivers a unique oscillation pattern, like a proper pattern that can brush your teeth up and down to properly get rid of any food remnants. That 60 degree oscillation design is controlled by a servo motor that's only utilized in robotic arms and within the app you can really control its vibration strength, oscillation range and oscillation speed practically fine-tune its different settings to be able to achieve the exact tuning that you want. I honestly think that for a starting price of $69.99, this is such a solid option. They offer the ABS, stainless steel and aluminum body, and aside from the three-pack bristles that come within the box, for $9.99, you can get a pack of three heads, and for $16.99, a pack of six heads. 0.02 millimeter soft tapper bristles that have a rate of 90% to make sure it's gentle on your gums as well. Look, if you are interested, I'll leave a link down below. I think a product like this goes perfectly hand in hand with your Apple products. With the Mac mini being this small though, surprisingly it does have all the ports most people will need. Like it is capable of natively powering a good amount of desktop goodies to get you up and running. For me though, 
these ports were definitely not enough so I did create a full entire setup in order for me to connect all of it to my Mac Mini. Now it's nothing too complicated but it did require a bit of money and some patience. My Mac Mini connects to a good amount of stuff starting with the most basic things you'll need for it like a monitor, mouse and keyboard as well as potentially going as far as getting some speakers although you don't have to because it does come with its own built-in speakers. which are very, very decent, but I wanted to have something that packs a punch. However, to implement the setup I wanted, I needed to go the extra mile. I got myself a dock and a USB-A hub from Anchor to be able to accomplish this. With this, I was able to connect my audio interface that powers up my Shure MV7, both of my Rocket 5 speakers, and when needed, my III headphones wirelessly. The dock also not only connects the hub, but it connects my peripherals and takes care of delivering signal via HDMI to my OLED MSI monitor. With that, I was also able to connect my DaVinci color grading console, my Quintus monitor light bar, and my SD card reader that chills on top of my dock. And so the base model Mac Mini just easily powers up all of this stuff. At the end of the day, if that's something you are worried about, don't worry, there are ways to really make it all work. When it comes to performance, I'm only going to be speaking from my own experience. Literally all the things I've used the Mac Mini for this past year and a half, I think most of you know, but I used to be a software dev. Not anymore, unless I'm keeping up with trends and learning new things, but this is what I bought it primarily for. At the same time, I also wanted the Mac Mini to be our home machine, like the machine we use to pay our bills, check our bank accounts, stream content to the TV if needed. Last year, I also started to do admin work here from time to time and, well, I consume a lot of YouTube on it when I'm chilling at home. But look, the most complicated workflow I run on this thing is my programming workflow. I usually have 10 to 20 Chrome tabs open, I have tutorials playing in the background, an emulator running from Xcode, Xcode building and compiling projects, and my terminal running Git to check in and check out my projects, I guess. With time in between projects and apps, I managed to fill up my 256 gigabyte of storage. Not only were those projects Xcode related, but I had other small little projects I was working on that were machine learning related. I think I spent hours trying to transform some Python code to Swift in order to natively test some models for machine learning. Anyways, I don't want to lose you here. My point is that with time and with all the work I was trying to get done, whether it was programming related, editing related, or even admin related, performance started to degrade for me. Why? Because I was eating up so much memory. Eventually I ran into memory pressure issues and because my SSD was filled with projects and that I needed, memory pressure swap wasn't even possible. By the way, swapping is when macOS moves data from the computer's memory, RAM, to storage space, SSD, to free up memory for other tasks. On Apple Silicon, this is done more efficiently because they use fast storage, making the process quicker. The way memory is shared on these Macs also helps reduce how often swapping is needed. When it does happen, the fast storage keeps everything running smoothly, so you don't notice much of a slowdown. But in my case, I ate so much of my storage and eventually had a workflow that evolved to the point that 8GB of RAM wasn't even enough, that both together, RAM and SSD couldn't deliver the performance I needed. And so theoretically, I should have gone with a 16, 512 configuration to future-proof myself. However, things got a little more complicated for me throughout the year because I now need to use DaVinci to its full potential now, I need a lot more room than I anticipated for Lightroom, and I like to continue working on programming projects without a problem. And so I'm personally running into some dilemmas. How much more do I spend to future-proof myself? Knowing at the rate we are growing, at the rate I am trying to code projects sometimes for benchmarking purposes, and at the rate I'm testing machines for reviews, I'm actually a bit confused on what machine I should replace this with. If I was to go with an M2 Pro Mac Mini that delivers 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, I think that checks most of my boxes and possibly most people's boxes. 
boxes but for my business because i review everything i use i'm not sure if people will like to see us reviewing that i'm also thinking of waiting for the m3 mac mini to come out especially since i did hear that apple is planning to skip m3 and go directly to m4 maybe we could see a base model with 16 gigabyte of ram and 512 gigabytes of storage but i also kind of want to make the investment of getting a full decked out mac studio to put against my own custom pc at the office this is my dilemma because i need more power for different reasons your dilemma might most likely be different but it's important you find your own sweet spot if you are someone like me who doesn't necessarily review devices for a living the m2 pro is quite attractive in my opinion if you have a bit more money to splurge definitely getting the mac studio is worth a shot and if you don't need it now then maybe waiting for the new mac mini might be the move I always suggest buying refurbished from their website, especially on products that have been out for quite a bit. You'll most likely be able to find the configuration you want if you spend enough time waiting and researching. Other than that, I mean, that's my experience after owning the Mac Mini for a year and a half. I think in 2024, it's still a fantastic machine to own. It literally all comes down to what you need it for. I hope this video helps you guys. I hope you've also enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. I wish you all a nice Sunday. Take care.